Hi, I'm George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video I'll be talking about linear inequalities in two variables and how to graph them. We begin by graphing the line that's associated with the inequality. If the inequality involves the symbol less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, we'll graph the line using a solid line. If the inequality is a strict inequality involving the symbols just less than or greater than, then the line is going to be graphed using a dashed line. We'll go ahead and select a test point that's not on the line, and we'll substitute the coordinates for x and y in the original inequality. If the test point is a solution, we'll shade the half plane that contains the test point. If it's not a solution, we'll shade the opposite side. Let's take a look at a few examples. We're going to begin by graphing 2x minus 3y is less than 6. Notice the inequality symbol is less than, not equal to, so we'll go ahead and graph this using a dashed line. This equation would be in standard form, so it's going to be easier to graph using the intercepts. The x-intercept, substituting 0 for y, 2x equals 6 or x equals 3. If we substitute 0 for x, we have negative 3y equals 6 or y equals negative 2. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And notice that the origin, 0, 0, is not on the graph of this line. That's an ideal candidate for the test point. Let's go ahead and see if 0, 0 is a solution. If it is, we will shade the top left portion of this graph. If it's not a solution, we're going to go ahead and shade the bottom right portion. Substitute 0 for x and 0 for y. We end up with the inequality 0 is less than 6, which is true. That tells us to shade the side of the line that contains the test point, 0, 0. Again, our test point gave us a true inequality. We will shade the side of the line that contains the test point. If this inequality had been false, we would shade the other side. Let's try another one. Uh, first thing to notice here is the equal sign under the greater than. That tells us to graph a solid line. Second, this is in slope-intercept form. We know the slope of this line is 1 8 and the y-intercept is at 0 2. That would be the most efficient way to graph this line. Taking a look at the graph, y-intercept at 0 2, up 1, 8 to the right, draw the line that passes through them. Again, notice 0 0, the origin is not on the line. That's an ideal test point. When we substitute 0 for x and 0 for y, we're left with the inequality 0 is greater than or equal to 2, which is false. So instead of shading the side that contains the origin, we're going to shade the other side of this line. Right? Not where the test point was, but on the other side of the line. Let's try one more. y is greater than 4x plus 20. This line will be dashed, no equal sign and we'll graph the line using the slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is at 0, 20, and the slope is 4. So starting at the y-intercept of 20, we move up 4, 1 to the right. Notice that the vertical scale here is in units of 4, and we draw the dashed line that passes through them. Again, the origin is not on the line, so we'll use that for our test point. When we substitute in, we are left with the inequality 0 is greater than 20, which is false. That tells us to shade the other side of the line. Here, that's going to be the top left. If you have any questions or comments on linear inequalities in two variables, go ahead and visit my contact page at my website, georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching.